All right, Navigators, welcome to January 2021. Brand new year, we're going to be continuing our Wednesday night battle stations through the Old Testament. We're leaving the book of Judges, and we're going to begin with the book of Ruth. And we'll move on from there. And on Sundays, we'll be continuing through the New Testament. We're moving on out of the book of Acts, and we're going to begin in the book of Romans. We'll be posting weekly assignments for each lesson. We'll be posting a project for each month for each program, the chapel on Sunday and the battle stations on Wednesday night. We'll also be putting some other assignments out, bonus assignments that you can either drop off at church or mail to the church or turn into the Navigator Facebook page. And if you're not a member of the Navigator Facebook page, please subscribe to that. That's where we'll be posting a lot of announcements for this upcoming year. We have our bulletins almost ready to be published. We'll put those on the Facebook page. We're looking forward to a great new year. We're also going to begin our change offering that we did last year, our change offering. We'll begin accepting that shortly, and we'll give you some more details on the project that we have in mind for that. But now, let's go to our pledges, then we'll have some songs. We'll get into our first lesson for Wednesday night battle stations. All right, navigators, let's begin our pledges. First, the American flag, the Christian flag, and then the Bible. Follow the command, repeat after me. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Let's turn our attention to God's Word. Attention, salute, pledge. Pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Stay standing. We're going to have some songs. All right, now, guys, we got a couple songs. We're going to do the B I B L E, and isn't he wonderful? Sing out now. The B I B L E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B I B L E. The B I B L E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. All right, isn't he wonderful? Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Once more. Isn't he wonderful, wonderful, wonderful? Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? Eyes have seen, ears have heard, it's recorded in God's Word. Isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? All right, get your Bibles out, ready for the lesson. Ruth chapter 1. We're going to begin our study, continuing through the Old Testament with the book of Ruth. We're finished with the Judges, but now before we move on, we're going to spend a few weeks in the book of Ruth. In Ruth chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass in the days when the Judges ruled. Our story takes place inside the book of Judges, and it does not take place at a good time in the book of of judges we see also in verse number one that there was a famine in the land there was a famine in the land as you study and read the book of judges you will see that when israel falls into idolatry and does not worship god and keep his commandments and follow after the covenant they made with him that he will send other nations to be their overlords to rule over them they are not their own masters he uses the Midianites, Canaanites, and many other tribes to do that. But he will also send famine. He will also send famine. In the books of Moses, he talks about not blessing the land with the rain if they would not keep his commandments and follow his word. And we see that that is what's happened 
In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine, a lack of rain. The crops are not being successful. And it tells us, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he, his wife, and his two sons. Our lesson today is called The Sojourn of No Return. The Sojourn of No Return. Verse number one, we have the reason for the sojourn. There was a famine. And this man and his family leave the promised land to go to Moab to sojourn. Not to stay forever, not to stay for too awful long a time period, just to get out of the famine for a little while. What I've always failed to understand is I didn't think that rivers border the river that borders the country of Moab and borders the country of Judah. I didn't think famine was restricted. To borders I feel that there was famine on all sides but they're in not in good spiritual mood this famine is just not physical it is a spiritual famine as well Israel is dealing with a famine because they have disobeyed God and they have fallen away from the things of the Lord that's why they're having a famine but the reason for the sojourn was we're gonna get out of here we're gonna leave the famine and we're gonna go to greener pastures Verse number two, it tells us the names of the sojourners. So we have the reason for the sojourn. We have the names of the sojourners. And the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilion. Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. The names of the sojourners. We take a lot from the story by the meaning of their names. Elimelech, his name means my God is king. Naomi means my beloved. The name Ephrathite means fertility. And the name Bethlehem Judah means house of bread and praise. Bethlehem means house of bread and Judah means praise. But we can see why Israel is in a famine because they're in a spiritually dark time and a falling away from the things of God because my God is king and my beloved, living in a fertile place of house of bread and a house of praise. Their two sons, Malon and Chilion, are named sickness and wasting. Malon's name means sickly and Chilion's name means waste. No wonder Israel is in a famine if this is their state. Because when you turn from my God is king and my beloved in a land of fertility, a land of bread and a land of praise, and your offspring is sickly, and your offspring is waste, you're not in a spiritually good place in your life. So we have the reason for the sojourn, a famine. We have the names of the sojourners. And verse number three for verse number five, we have the state of the sojourners. And it tells us, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And while they were continuing there, verse number four, and they took them wives of the women of Moab. And the name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. The state of the sojourners. Elimelech died. Malon and Chilion died. And the woman was left alone and destitute with nothing. Their short-term sojourn ended up far too long into a permanent residence in the grave. In verse number one, it tells us they went to sojourn. Verse number three, we see they continued there. Verse number four, they dwelt there 10 years. Verse number five, they're all dead. And they're there permanently. And their bones are still in the grave in the land of Moab and not in the house of bread, in the house of praise. We need to be careful when we decide to sojourn and travel and leave. But these folks here had physically left the God of their forefathers, for they had already spiritually, mentally left the God of their forefathers. They just took that last step and wandered off and wandered away. And I need to warn you today, your short-term trip your short-term stint away from God, away from his house, and away from his people 
to go into a strange land and a strange place, your sojourn will not be short. Your sojourn will can turn, can turn into a continuance. And that continuance can last years, up to 10 years at a time. And then it can end up into a permanent residency. And in this case, it ended in death for most of the family. And the only one left was left alone standing there with nothing. Be careful to be, leave God. Be careful of our spiritual condition. Be careful of our physical location in the world. The Bible tells us about being in places where we do not belong. Don't stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Be careful where we go. Remember the prodigal son of the New Testament in the parables of Christ. He went to that far country and he left and he almost did not return. So the story of the book of Ruth does not begin off on a good page. But if you look at many stories that we've heard over our lifetime and through time, think of all the fairy tales and the stories that you hear about that don't start off really well. Cinderella, Snow White, Rapunzel. But they all end happily. And in this case, the story is not over, it's just beginning. So this is not a fairy tale. This is real life. These are real people who left a real, true, living God and wandered off. And the first page and the first chapter is not pretty. It's not pleasant. It is pathetic and it is sad. And it speaks a lot of Israel's spiritual state. And it can also reflect in the spiritual state of people today. But we'll be back next week. The sojourn of no return. But next week we'll be back with, come home, something's waiting.